Introduction to the CIH Opal motor. So you've bought a new Opal GT or an Opal Manta and now you're thinking you're going to rebuild the motor. Manuals are the manuals and they're a little old. And some things they don't cover and one of the things they don't cover and what we're going to really try to cover here in this, in this part is all the differences between early to late model motors and the different variations that happen inside of those years because there's a lot of them and they're, some of them are subtle and don't matter, some of them matter a lot. So. Okay, we're going to start with the timing cover. The timing cover is the first part you kind of need to build because you cannot build the block until you have the timing cover ready to go on the block because then you have to put the oil pan on and then you can put the head on. This is a timing cover. Now it's pretty simple. It's just a piece of aluminum. Nothing, nothing fancy in there. Um, the oil pump goes in here, but we'll get to that when I start showing how to build the timing cover. But what it, I really wanted to point out were the differences in different model years. This one is one of the early ones, and this is from a carbureted motor. And you're going to see here it has a hole for the, fuel, for the fuel pump. That, if you go to fuel injection, needs to be covered up. Or if you go to an electric fuel pump, that needs to get covered up. Um, also, uh, the earlier ones that have, do not have this regulator, and they'll have a flat plate, and they'll be 10 volt. And I'll get to what the difference between a 10 and a 12 volt head is in a minute. But basically, these two uh, bolt holes here would not exist on a very early 10 bolt cover. And also, the 10 bolt covers are a little shorter here, like we're talking a millimeter shorter. So if you don't do a little prep on that, you can actually get an oil leak if you don't do it properly. This one here is a 75. This is for uh, the early fuel injection. As you can see, no fuel pump. And it also has a little pointer so you can actually set and do a timing light mark on your pulley, which is the only one I've found so far that actually does that. This is a 2.2. 2.2, just like the other one, but its difference is that it had a port here that's not used for anything that I know of, other than some diagnostic on the 2.2 fuel injection, now, as I've been told. I don't, I've not seen that, so I'm not exactly sure of what it's for, but it's not for the fuel injection itself because there's nothing that goes there. But on the 2.4 cover, which is special, there is. And there's a crank sensor that goes in here that's required for the 2.4 fuel injection. That is why this one is a little bit more special than the other ones. Um, that said, you can still put the uh, inject, you can still put the crank sensor on one of these other ones. It's just not going to be quite as uh, accurate. You're still going to need to have the oil pump cover for the 2.4, which I'll show when I'm building it later. But that primarily is a difference with the timing covers. Now, when you get to the heads, the heads can be a lot different. Um, this is what we were talking about just a minute ago. This is a 10 bolt head. The 10 bolt head does not have the 11th and 12th bolts. The 10 bolt heads are, are different in a couple of ways. Number one way is that they have only three bearings, most of them. I'll, I'll, I'll get to the difference. There is one specific model that's a little unique. But most 10 bolt heads are solid lifters only. And what solid lifters mean is basically this is a solid chunk of metal that's stuck in the head. But, uh, and all the rest of them are going to be using hydraulic lifters. So that make, makes a difference um, in the kind of cam you use and some other parts of your build. This is a solid lifter and it's a solid piece of metal. There's no moving parts. This is a hydraulic lifter and if you can, you push it. This basically has a spring inside and this piece here is pumped up with oil pressure that comes through. So as you can see, this one has no hole for the oil pressure. This one does have an hole for oil to get into and lift it up. So 10 bolt heads use a very use a different bearing which is a little harder to get and when you get them most of the time they're semi-finished which means that your machine shop is going to cost charging more. And that particular head is the 1.9 uh, uh, H head which is a nice head to have if you're trying to get a little bit more compression but again the bearing problem kind of makes it a wash. Now, when you're looking at the different heads, and you're looking at the 12-bolt heads and the 10-bolt heads and the 2.2, 2.4 heads, there are, are also some additional differences. This is what makes a 12-bolt. This is what makes a 10-bolt. These are your 10-bolts. These are your 11 and 12-bolt. Now, most 10-bolt heads, as you can see here, have one, two, three cam bearings. 12-bolt heads have one, two, three, four cam bearings inside this right here, that, that actually like this one here, this is a cam bearing, you're basically your cams are going to ride on those. 
There is an exception to this rule. In the 1971 head, there is a 10 bolt, four bearing head. And that one you can tell by, if you look here on the side, there's a number here. This is called a delta head, it's a delta 19A head. If you look on the 75 head over here, well, this is a two liter head, this says X2E, that's an XR2E head. This is an X19A head, your standard 12 bolt. Now, the 71 head will say X19, but it will be a 10 bolt head. Why this matters? These, he these heads here have a lot more carbon on them, and as you can see, this one was cleaned by my machine shop about a year ago. It's rusty already. It doesn't look like this anymore. That's what it looks like when it came out of the machine shop. Now, these have a lot more carbon in them. They rust a little bit easier, and the other thing about them is that they also tend to crack better. The 10 bolts have more nickel in them, so they don't crack as bad and they're easier to work on. So that's what I prefer, but that's a preference more than anything else. Here is a 2.4 head. The 2.2 and the 2.4 head have much bigger openings here. On your standard head, it's a smooth D shape. Here, you, you see this extra roundness here. You have a little bit extra size in the chamber. They did that because also, the heads themselves are different here. If you'll notice, this pin, this pin sits lower than this pin, and this, these ports are higher than these ports. So that's what makes a, a uh, 1.9 head or the low port head different from the high port head from the 2.2 and the 2.4. And of course, now we have the block. What is different about the open motor is, as we mentioned with the cam and head, most engines do not have their cam in their head. They have their cam on top of the head, or they have the cam in the block, and it's with push rods that come up and push the lifters. We don't have that. Um, we, we, that's, why we're, that's why our motor is different. That's why it's called a cam and head. What it does do, though, is it makes it easy to work on the block. Because our blocks are literally a crank, some rods, and some pistons and bearings. That's it. Everything else is either in the timing cover or in the head. There are uh, primarily these two different blocks. There's some differences in other ways, but the 2.4 block and the 2 liter block um, are effectively the same block uh, when it comes to freeze plugs. Now, there are, is a 2 liter block that's more like a 1.9 block, and it kind of falls in between those periods. But So you basically have your two, two ones. The ones with big freeze plugs, which is like this one here, where you have your, you have your, you know, you have a water galley on the on the upper part, and then you have your oil, um, your oil pressure gauge there. Uh, you got your mount, your engine mount, and then you got the mount for air conditioning or power steering, and you got four big freeze plugs. You come over here, and you have the two freeze plugs, and then you have two weird 29 millimeter freeze plugs, and of course your standard mounts for your alternator and your engine mount. On the Opel 1.9, there's the oil galley, the motor mount, and uh, three, but not necessarily four, depending on the year of the block, uh, connectors on the front, and then a water jacket connection, that plug that really is hard to get out, but no freeze plugs. Now, when you come over here to the rear of it, you have that oil galley right there, as you can see, right there, and then here, uh, there's a freeze plug. So the freeze plug's in the back of the block. I guess they probably fe felt that, hey, maybe that's not a good idea because if it pops, you have to pull the whole motor. And then there's two freeze plugs on the, uh, on the starter driver side of the block, uh, but that's it. As far as the internals are concerned, it pretty much looks like the same casting. I mean, I believe if you really, if I mic'd it, I would probably find that the, uh, the earlier casting is thicker. It, it does, it, there seems to be a little bit more, less room in here for it. The one big difference between 2.2, the 2.3, the 2 liter, the 1.9, all other cam and head motors, and the 2.4 is the crank. And as you can see here, we have two crank weights, we have two more crank weights. 
We spin it around. And we have two more and two more. We have a total, each piston has two counterweights. Nice and balanced design. This is only on the 2.4. All right, I just pointed out the differences with the 2.4 uh, crank and it's eight counterweights as opposed to the standard 1922 style of crank which has four counterweights you notice there's one there's a there's not a counterweight here there's not a counterweight there there's not a counterweight there and there's not a counterweight there just the one on the front back and the two in the middle and that's basically the difference that you see in, in the 1.9s uh, and the 2.2s and, and, and the two cranks uh, they all have the same um, journal, and as you can see right here, that journal is kind of uh, about the same width as the rod. Because they did make a version of this as a diesel. That, that block itself is actually almost a full, it's almost about full three inches, 10 millimeters, I mean 10 centimeters taller. This one over here is the two three crank, and as you can tell, it's a bit, bit beefier. Um, the 2.3 crank weighs a lot more too. The main journals though are the same. Uh, they, they really, they, they obviously with the 2.3 fitting into the block they had to be the same. There is one difference though. If you'll notice here that there's a gap between the block and the main. Um, that bearing is actually wider and it's deeper on the standard uh, 2.3 turbo diesel blocks. So when I build the 2.5, and I'll run a video on that later, um, we're going to see a machined down version of this where we're going to lighten up the crank to build the 2.5 motors that I'm going to be custom building out of 1.9 blocks. There you have it. Uh, the biggest differences between, um, that you can physically tell between your 2.2, 2.4, and 2 liter blocks and 1.9 blocks. Uh, well that's it for uh, the introduction to the Opel CIH motor and I hope you enjoyed it and if you did please subscribe and hit the bell I got a lot more coming up on uh, we're gonna do a complete rebuild on on uh, this motor um, I got another uh, rebuild I'm gonna be building a 2.5 liter motor I can go I'm gonna go over all that for what what we require to do the custom build um, and I'm gonna do a live break-in on one of these motors and uh, yeah so I'll, I'll like got a lot more coming and uh, we're also gonna be looking into uh, uh, rebuilding the uh, torque tube and we're going to have more things coming up like that in the near future. So, uh, yeah, be sure to subscribe. And uh, thank you very much.